Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here so early. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to talk with you at the DEFCON Blue Team Village. My name is Yan, and my colleague's name is Si Yu, but he can't be here because of his visa. So I will sh share it by myself this, this time. Uh, and I'm not good at English, so if you have any questions about this talk, uh, it's better that we can chat face to face after I finish this talk. Thank you. The topic is invaded Microsoft ATA, but you are completely exposed by the event log. So I will talk about how our team tackled AD attacks and what we have done. We are the zero key team from 360. Our team focuses on web application security, pen testing, and enterprise security. Uh, and this is our team's um, blog website. But there are all Chinese blogs now. I think we will write some English blogs later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the talk has six parts. The first part introduces why we do it, and the second part is the uh, architecture we have designed to analyze the event log in real time. In, in the third part, we will show you some detections in detail. In the fourth part, we will show you the examples in the current program we use to detect the AD attacks. Finally, summary and thanks. Okay, let's go. Most enterprises are managed using Active Directory now. AD attack always occurs in the APT. Through it, the attacks can access to the important assets. So the enterprises have paid more attention to the AD security now. We need to detect advanced attacks and insider threats before they cause damage to our organization. But from the internal recon to asset access, the AD attack covers multiple attack queue chain stages. There are many methods and tools to do the AD attack. So it's hard to distinguish the normal and abnormal behaviors. There are few tools we can use to protect our AD. Even many defenders do don't know they have suffered the AD attack. Face to the AD attack, the blue team is always in a passive situation. They said, I can detect AD attacks, but you can't. Mm, I have to say mm, the Microsoft ATA. Microsoft ATA may be the most famous and the best tools to detect AD attacks. The main uh, dictation method of ATA is to analyze the traffic through an ATA gateway or the deployed lightweight gateway uh, directly on the DC. Addition, it can import and analyze Windows events too. Microsoft ATA can detect multiple suspicious activities and cover most of the attack kill chains. To be honest, it's the first company to achieve such a great effect. But is that all? First, the ATA is not cheap. Yeah, its price is $80 per user. I saw it, uh, I saw it on their documents that uh, to our company, we, uh, there are more than 6,000 employees in our company. It may cost about uh, $500,000. Moreover, ATA has some lim limitations. They analyze traffic mainly, so we have some problems with the encrypted traffic, the unmonitored protocols, and the update to detect new attacks and some bypassing and so on. So if you want to know more about ATA bypass, you can refer to this black hat talk. So we decided to do it by ourselves, although the Microsoft ATA is really great. Oh, okay. 
We do not use the traffic to detect attacks. The only thing we focus on is the event log of the DC. The event log records all the user activities and the object changes in uh, Active Directory. Before we analyze the event logs, we need to turn on all the audit items in the local audit policy. So let's look at the form format of the event log. There are two different parts in the event log. The first part is general information, such as the system information. The second part is the detailed information of changes according to different event IDs. We focus on those common IDs. You can see that different event ID uh, represents different uh, interesting action. Okay, this picture is an uh, architecture we designed. We collect the event logs on all of the DCs by one log bit and send them to the log stash. Next, log stash will save the logs to RabbitMQ. After that, the logs will be consumed to uh, twice. One is saved to Elasticsearch, another one is analyzed by our detection uh, algorithm. We learn the behavior of users through logs and then generate alarms. Finally, we can see the detailed alarm data on the web console. Our arch architecture is very lightweight, so just uh, install the WinLog B on all DCs. There is no other impact on the domain environment. So let's punch the intruders. <laughs> uh, then this is an uh, important part. According to the way of in detections, we will explain this content through five kinds. The content covers most common attacks and more detection methods are not listed because of time. Mm, the first kind, incompleted Kerberos protocol. Let's review the Kerberos process, which is roughly divided to three steps. The first step is the authentication service, uh, aka AS. <coughs> the user generates the password hash and sends it to the KDC. After the KDC verified it successfully, the TGT is encrypted by the password hash of the content named KRB TGT. And the final TGT is returned to the a user. The second step is a ticket grant service. The user sends the TGT to the KDC. Then the KDC does not verify whether the user has permissions to the service. It only checks whether the TGT can be decrypted with the password of the account named K KRB TGT. And then user and you then use the machine password of the target service to get the ST. Mm, finally, the user use ST to access the target service. In the previous two steps, the AS request will trigger the 476A log, and the TGS request will trigger the 4769 log. So the complete coverage will have both 476A and 4769 logs. We can track each coverage ticket request by the event logs. So let's see the golden ticket. The TGT is encrypted using password hash of the account named KRBTGT. Once we got this hash, we can forge any user's TGT which is the golden ticket. Because the TGT is forged, the user does not send a corresponding AS request from the machine and there is no 476A log on the DC. And moreover, the default maximum, maximum 
lifetime for TGT and ST is 10 hours. So the detection idea is very obvious. obvious. Uh, yeah. When we found the 4769 event log, we can search for the corresponding TGT request record according to the time of the TGT maximum lifetime. For example, we we received a uh, 4769 log whose source IP is xxx.12 and the target username is hacker. Next, we need to find a 4768 log from the stored logs whose source IP is also uh, xxx.12 and target username is hacker and the time is within 10 hours. Just like the picture. Uh, if you can't find one, maybe you have been attacked by the golden ticket. Golden ticket is for the TGT, but the silver ticket is for the ST. The ST is encrypted by the password hash of the machine. If we have the machine password hash, we can forge the ST. So the attacker will not send both AS requests and there are neither 476A now mm, 4769 logs left on the DC. So how can we detect it? The detection idea is similar to the golden ticket. When the 4624 event is triggered on the DC, find the corresponding 476A and 4769 log, uh, event logs. For example, we, we received a 462 Four log whose source IP is dot twelve. Target username is hacker. Next, we will need to find a four seven six nine log from the stock logs whose source IP is uh, xxs dot twelve. Target username is hacker. If you can't find one, maybe you have been attacked by silver ticket. Uh, you can see that it seems that we can only detect the silver ticket uh, when attacking the DC use silver ticket. I will talk about another way to detect the silver ticket in the another part later. Uh, so only rely on the event log we can uh, it exactly link the TGT and the ST according to a uh, unique ID. I can't find such a value in the log. Cur currently we only rely on uh, source IP uh, and uh, uh, target username to track the source of the ticket request. The source IP may change, causing some false p positives. In theory, there are there is no false negative and you can reduce false positives by add some filters. Okay, the second kind, login records. In addition to the Kerberos protocol introduced uh, earlier, there is another authentication protocol in the domain, NTLM. Uh, here is how we detect past the hash. Attackers can <coughs> remotely access a target workstation with NTLM hash by using tools such as Mimikaz, WMIC, SMB client, and so on. If a domain account is used to authentication, the 4776 event log will be triggered on the DC. <laughs> The target account and the source work workstation name are displayed in the log. Although we can't analyze the abnormal protocols like ATA to check the PTH, but we can ex establish a mapping of usernames and the workstations by recording login event log. Each domain account should log into its own machine and cross-motion login behavior is not allowed. So when we found the 
that the target username and computer name shown in the 4776 log are not the same as the known mapping, we need to pay attention to it. But unfortunately, we found some false positives because many people use their own dom domain account to log in a public computer. The third kind, sensitive action includes some high-risk operations and activities that do not match the target's, target's identity. Case one, modify ACL. ACL is a list of access control entries. The ACL uh, determines who can access the objects in the AD and each object have a property called security descriptor which stored information about it. ACL is divided into DACL and SACL. The DACL lists the security information about who have access right to the object and his level of access. Here we mainly focus on DACL. Okay. Each ACL modification is recorded in detail in the 5136 log. The SDDL syntax is used to describe the permission information in the log. It defines the SID of the AD object, the group ID, and the flags of the DACL. It contains a list of ACE, and each ACE defines the permissions of an object. Ne next, let me explain how to detect ACL-related attacks. CVE 2018-8581, um, the popular exchange uh, vulnerability at the beginning of the year. Attacker modifies the ACL by NTLM relate to DC and then uh, execute DC sync. The requirement to execute DC sync is to have the replicating directory changes and replicating directory changes all permissions. So the attack use the exchange account to modify the ADCL and ACL and add the permissions. Um, to modify the ACL, we'll trigger 5136 event log. Then we can check the permissions after passing the attribute value. Monitor all 5136 events and find out that someone add abnormal account access rights to the ACL. Mm, pay attention to the user who performs the modification, the modify operation. If they, it's a default account like the exchange, then the domain is likely to have been attacked. Because th these counts rarely have uh, uh, active operations. Case two, detect DC shadow. It can remotely modify the object information in the domain without logging to the domain controllers. The actor stimulates the machine as a DC, sending a sync request to the real domain controller. The technique is considered difficult to detect. However, the attack can be easier detected by analyzing the event log. We select two of the event logs to introduce uh, in detection. First, the DC shadow. Uh, as the SPN to the current computer, the value is prefixed with the DRS interface GUID, like uh, E3514235. Dot dot uh, here. So we detect 4742 event log and check the SPN value modification of the computer account. 
if a special value in it and the computer is not a DC, this is a DC shadow attack. Second, we check the replication monitoring event, the false none to none log. If the source address is not a DC, this is also a DC shadow attack. Um, another one, admin privilege granted. Attacks add compromised account to some group to keep persistence. These groups are not just domain admins and uh, administrators, but also include backup operators, DNS admins, server operators, account operators, and so on. So we need to Pay attention to the following event log like this one. The member name is hacker and the target username is domain admins. It seems that the hacker will be added to the domain admins uh, and have the administrator's privileges. Uh, constrained delegation. Adding to account to the administrator group is to obvious and easy to find. So the, the attacker can access the DC by setting the constrained delegation, delegation on the target DC for the compromised account. For example, setting the value of allowed to delegate to is ldap slash dc dot defcon dot org and you can execute DC sync to DC. Um, the detection of the comp constrained delegation is easy. Modify a user count where trigger 4738 event log. We can check the allowed to delegate the to field and find a sensitive value such as LDAP, CIFS, and our host to find the attack. The fourth kind, honeypot account. We can create accounts with administrator privileges that contain settings which are of interest to the attackers. Uh, those accounts don't, don't look any different from the normal accounts. They just have the attra attractive pr permissions. The first honeypot account type attractive SPN value. Cobra Roasting's first step is to find a service account which with a, a specific prefix value for SPN or admin count equal to one. The attackers uh, attempts to request the ST use using RC4 encryption and the local offline crack password. If the account has permissions, uh, have administrator privileges, the attacker can quickly gain access. Pay close attention to all activities related to the honeypot accounts, such as SAM, Kubernetes, and uh, account login, and so on. If the honeypot account with SPN value of the MS SQL service prefix does not attract the attacker, set a constrained delegation with a value of LDAP slash DC DEFCON organization for this account. Uh, once, uh, once the attacker cracks the, uh, this Honeypot account, he can got all the passwords from the account via DC uh, sync. Well, it sounds great. The attacker can only need to request the ST and then have a cup of coffee waiting for the password to be crashed successfully. But we are waiting for them too. The third Honeypot account not required pre auth if setting the do not require Kerberos authentication, 
the attacker can request the TGT for offline uh, cracking. We can turn this option on to induce uh, attackers to request it so that we can detect malicious behavior. Final, pay attention please. In your situation, the honeypot account will not be used, so any related logs will be triggered by the attacker. In order to prevent successful cracking, the honeypot account must set a complex password, and the password length is greater than 12, uh, no, 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 25. Also, in order to prevent uh, catch the tickets or being taken over by other methods, do not log in and uh, use the content, uh, account. The fifth part detects a known threat. Case one, fake account info. Each user has a unique and unchanging SID in the domain. You can query the information of account by username or SID. When an attacker use Mimikaz to create a silver ticket, he can fill in any user and any ID parameters. This ticket is valid, but the log will record, record all the information. So when the Attackers use silver ticket to log into the DC. The following 4624 four logs will be left on the DC. When the attacker randomly filled in the username or SID, we can see that the username and SID can't match or can't be queried. So we can use another way to detect the silver ticket when the hacker is not careful. Case two, privilege uh, is, is correlation, I think it's very worth to share. The 4672 event log is triggered on the DC when the administrator logs into to the DC. In, in other words, only the ad, administrator's login can trigger the 4672 uh, event log. The subject username and the subject user SID fields show the current administrator's name and SID. So what can we do? We found something interesting. After you, after you successfully uh, Escalate privilege with MS four fourteen zero six A and you log into the DC, it will trigger four six seven two event. But at this point, you are not administrator. You just forged a PAC and got temporary temporary administrator privileges. So when we found the name in the four six 72 log, but he is not an administrator. It must have been attacked. More than MS 14.06a, there may be other ways to escalate privilege in the future, as long as it is a mm, temporary privilege escalation, it must not escape this detection. Uh, at the last more detections. We can detection the co-hosting AS request roast by monitoring the value of ticket encryption type in 476A and 4769 event log. We can recognize the attacker's tools by mon monitoring the value of ticket options in 476A and 4769 event log. Uh, there are many tricks here, um, but it needs a long time to describe them. Uh, so I won't talk about these tricks and uh, many other detections in detail this time. You, if you are interested in them, I can show you after I finish the, the talk.
achievement, achievements here. Uh, there are some videos. Uh, it's so sorry that it only has the Chinese version. Um, so the first one is easy. It's an example that we detect the uh, admin group enumeration. We executed the, the net group domain admin slash domain account a uh, comment. Open our web console. Yeah. Uh, we detect it. It shows that someone uh, enumerated the domain admin groups by using the account named um, test user one. Okay, this is a, an example that we detect the golden ticket attack. <laughs> we use uh, uh, minicast to create a golden ticket and then use it. Oh, just wait. Okay, then we detect it. It shows that the computer one is requesting the ST and never requested a TGT. So we regard it as a golden ticket attack. Oh, we can also get detailed information on the web console. Okay, this is an example of DC shadow. We also use the mini cat to do the DC shadow attack. Okay, we detect that the computer uh, zero two simulates the domain controller zero one with the privileges of exchange the account exchange the zero one because it has modified the value of computer zero two's SPN value to the abnormal value. Okay, uh, the last and uh, complex one, CVE 2018 and 8581. We use the tools to relay the exchange NTLM hash to the DC and modify the ACL. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, it needs some time. No, 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 no. Okay, succeed. Here, we will find, oh, we found the NTLM of the computer zero two, which is a exchange server has being related to the DC, DC zero one. Uh, it can show the detailed information of the uh, machine and the user. Then the ex uh, exchange change, the exchange server modified the ACL. Uh, you can see the new alarm in the abnormal ACL mod modification. We detect it successfully. Uh, at the last conclusion, there are some limit limitations with the event log. First, there are some false pos positives in the detection of lateral movement. But if you can collect local event logs, you can detect lateral movement attacks more ex <coughs> exactly. Second, if the attack methods do not trigger the event logs on DC, we cannot detect them, such as a elevation to DA from DNS admin memberships, attacking circuit server, 
pass the hash with local account searching info by LDAP and so on. Although there are some limitations, I think it's worth to do it. We only do the DC event log analysis. It's lightweight and easy to deploy. And we have finished the port. Uh, uh, 36 kinds of alarms belong to different Q chain stages. We, we can detect most persistence ac attacks by analyzing event logs such as admin SD holder, DSRM, group policy, DC shadow, uh, SID history, modify ACL, and so on. So in a word, the process of attack generates traffic, and the result of the attack is event log. Our analysis is based on the results of the attack, which is less likely to be bypassed or confused than the process analysis. Mm, so I think if you have known the attack methods, you can build your own ATA by analyzing event laws. It's not very hard. OK, that's all. It's hard to do the Q&A directly for me. So if you have any questions, I can, we can chat face to face. Uh, you can also directly message us via Twitter or email. OK, thank you. Thank you all.